As the wind and ice pummels you like knives making a thousand cuts, the skeletal army is relentless in their attack. Aided by a white dragon wormling, the horde continues to gain ground. Is this the end of your adventure? Will you spend eternity in a cold, snowy grave? Will you rise to the challenge and overcome the odds? Will you make it home alive? Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Snow terrain. There are countless ways to approach this build, and they vary greatly in terms of complexity, durability, and modularity. So when it came time for me to start building a snow terrain set, I started out by setting some guideline rules for myself with the build. Now these guidelines are a little bit restrictive and they definitely don't result in what I would think would be the best looking pieces, but they resulted in the pieces that are best for me. I did not want to use any type of snow flocking or texture paste. I didn't want to deal with it in the build and I just didn't want it on the finished pieces. I didn't want to have items that would possibly chip or flake or shed flocking in the future. I just wanted something simple. I also wanted them to be really, really durable and I wanted everything to be reusable. I didn't want any big set piece items. So to start, I made some really simple snow hills. I didn't make rocky outcroppings or cliffs covered with snow, just simple hills. Whenever I do a build, people always comment saying, hey, you should put some moss on it or some vines or some just whatever kind of vegetation. But I don't often do it. And the reason for that is that I want my pieces to be as universal as possible. I want them to look right in every setting. Those ruins can now be used in a snow setting once I have this set complete. I don't have to build snow versions of every item. I'm gonna need some sort of main battle mat or board to place them all on. And again, there's a lot of different ways I could go about doing this. And to be honest, I haven't quite decided which route I'm gonna take. So I'm gonna figure that out over the next week and that's gonna be the next episode in the series. But until then, let's start with the most important thing, the hills. Normally when I build things out of XPS foam, it doesn't matter what brand or color I use. But in this case, I intentionally chose blue foam. This way, if my snow hills ever chip or get damaged, a small little bit of blue showing through won't stand out the same way pink would. I carved out the hills using a handheld cutter from Hotwire Foam Factory. This type of job is where the handheld is far superior to a tabletop cutter. While the handheld Proxon cutter is great for a lot of things, I do actually find the thinner wire of the Hotwire Foam Factory one to be a little bit easier to work with and faster with these types of cuts. Of course, this is a very forgiving project and you could absolutely do this with just a utility knife. At this point, I already had some shapes that would be perfectly serviceable as icy hills. In theory, I could just paint them white and call it a day. The issue is that the foam around the edges is very delicate and susceptible to breaking. As much as I don't like basing my terrain, in this case, it's a really good idea to do so. To keep things simple and avoid having to break out a jigsaw, I based these on chipboard. This would provide enough of a durable edge to the pieces and remain very thin. Because the foam pieces are so large, there wouldn't be any issue with warping on the thin bases. I hot glued all the hills to the piece of chipboard and before cutting them out, I moved on to the next step of sculpting. While the hot wire cutter makes great patterns for perfect icebergs or glaciers, I wanted these to look like wind-swept snowy hills. 
So using a heat gun on high, I began to soften all those edges. The heat gun creates a perfect effect for this as it rounds over all the hard peaks and creates sweeping ridges that look perfect for snow drifts. It also creates a great texture in flat areas that is ideal for snow. The other advantage of the heat gun is that it cauterizes the foam and makes it really, really hard. So hard that I don't bother coating these in Mod Podge later. It's important to note that I'm doing the heat effect before cutting out the bases. Since the foam shrinks when it's heated, it's better to cut out the shapes after. Using an Ulfa knife, I cut out the general shape of the hills, leaving about a half inch border. Then with the piece overhanging the edge of my work table, I cut it again with a bevel. This would make the base come up at a gradual angle from the table. You can also file this smooth with sandpaper or a nail file. In order to blend the base into the foam, I used some Alex Plus, which is a cheap acrylic caulking. You could use joint compound for this, but I prefer the caulking as it's more flexible and it won't chip. It also acts as a great adhesive in case the hot glue didn't fully attach to any of the foam. Using some water on my finger, I blend in the caulking to the hill, trying to be aware of any ridges or lines I might leave, making sure it would visually make sense for windswept snow. This might seem like a daunting process, but it's really pretty easy and it's very quick. I managed to get my whole set to this point in about an hour and a half. The caulking does need at least 12 hours to dry before moving on to painting, so it's a good idea to leave them overnight. I didn't want to waste a lot of craft paint on these considering how much area I had to cover, so instead I used some white primer. This is just regular house paint primer. You can grab any old can as long as it's untinted. It will bond really well and provides a very durable surface. You want to make sure you're using either primer or a truly flat paint for this though. Even a white eggshell would probably be far too glossy to look like snow. It's important to avoid brush marks, so once I had the pieces covered in primer, I used my brush to stipple the entire piece. This creates a more organic texture in the primer instead of brush lines. It's very likely that you'll need to do two coats to cover the blue foam like I did. The hills looked great as is, but I wanted to get a little bit fancy, so I picked up some white pearlescent craft paint. The idea was to add a bit of reflective shimmer in the hopes it would give a more exaggerated snow look. I watered down the paint a lot, almost creating a wash, as I wanted the effect to be pretty subtle. So put this pearlescent paint on and honestly, I don't like it at all. I was hoping it would be a little subtle effect. You just give a little bit of reflective kind of, you know, enhancement to the snow. But overall, it just makes it look kind of ridiculous. It's really, really <laughs> noticeable. It's not subtle at all, even though I watered it down quite a bit. And it's hard to tell on the camera, but it sort of just made it look dirty in parts. Like as it dried, it started to just look kind of gray and dirty. And you can see it here, it's kind of splotchy. And it just looks too magical. This is not what I was going for. This might look great if you were doing like a magical ice cave or whatever, but I just want this to look like regular snow drifts and snow is not this glistening and pearly. This was a mistake. So I'm going to repaint these with a flat white. Uh, yeah, I, nope, not a fan. So an important lesson here is it's okay to not like something you've done to a piece and it's okay to revert it back to the way it was. Something my carpentry teacher said to me when I was starting my training many years ago was, don't keep a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. And I remembered that here as I was covering the pearlescent paint with another coat of white primer. 
in the end, that simple flat white had the best look. One nice thing about this is that because I put on the paint pretty thick when the caulking probably hadn't fully cured, was it actually caused the paint to shrink and crack, giving an extra bit of texture that worked really well for snow. Normally, I'd coat my pieces in spray varnish, but given how hard the foam was from the heat gun and how durable the house paint is, I didn't really think that was necessary. I'm not totally in love with these hills. They aren't as impressive looking as if I had done rocky hills with snow flock or texture paste, but they serve their purpose well and they are ideal for gaming. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your build, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page with links to all of the things that I use and recommend. Those are affiliate links, so shopping with them helps fund these videos. I also include links to items specific to this build in the video description below. If you love the videos I make every week and want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds ensure I can focus so much time and effort into these videos and this community. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. There you have it guys. I hope you found this video entertaining, informative, and most of all, inspiring. If you like this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. And a reminder, make sure to come back next week, next Friday, where I figure out what I'm doing for a main board to put all the scatter hills on. Not sure yet, but I'll come up with something. See you guys again next week. Cheers. Mm -hmm.